so Timepiece was um, was conceived a couple of years ago, and it was conceived for a Pacific space at the in the Camden Roundhouse in London, which is a beautiful Victorian uh, circular building with 24 columns in the space. And I was asked to respond to this space, and when I discovered that there were 24 columns, that really drove the work in a really particular direction, and it actually became the sort of driving force for the whole work. And because I was looking into the number 24 and where it appears in society and in culture and history. And there is really only one place it exists, and that is in the, the 24 hour day. It's almost like a nine piece metronome. So you have this metronomic uh, state, which is in, when a metronome is an incredibly, from my point of view, it's such a simple yet incredibly complicated thing because you don't have just a single beat. You have this sine wave of acceleration and deceleration and it clicks at the moment where it stops. And so you have basically these very, very complex um, speed profiles. And yet throughout it, you have this constancy that is the sort of driving beat which you set the pendulum at the certain weight, the same length. And I think this, this piece in, it, in, in, in many regards has that same constancy and that same drive, but there are many layers. There's like a, all moving parallel together. You have these nine movements that continue and they accelerate and decelerate, but they are constant. So my relation to music is one of uh, sort of admiration. I'm not a musician in any way. I don't read music, but I have always involved myself with music and I've always enjoyed music. I, I'm particularly interested, being not a very talented musician myself, at the, um, at, the, at the sort of mathematics behind music and the reason why we find particular ratios or particular chords moving or full of pathos. But actually, the, the older I get and the more that I work, the, the closer I see this, the, the intertwined nature of these things. And suddenly, from my point of view, what I'm trying to do as an artist is see things that I can't see with my eyes or visualize things that are invisible, that are beyond the perception of man or beyond the abilities of the electron microscope or the, or the, or the size of um, what we can perceive in terms of the universe. And so it's dealing with these sort of big ideas. And I think I try to do the same things. It's trying to deal with things that can't necessarily be described or unless you're a quantum mathematician, I'm trying to visualize um, whether in this case, it's sort of, it's kind of musical, the mathematics of music. So it's quite synesthesial. But um, with a lot of the work, it's about trying to visualize things that are complex or abstract or, or, um, or essentially sort of subtle. So on Saturday, I'm going to do a talk with Daniel. Um, there's, there's so much sort of common ground, I think, between this piece and what he does. And so we're going to talk about the history of timekeeping. We're going to talk about Mahler's first. We're going to talk about the relationship of music to, to visualization, synesthesia. We're going to talk about mathematics of music. We're going to talk about uh, many things. So hopefully there'll be a, it will be informal. So we, our sort of shared knowledge, will have a lot of things that will bounce off each other and we'll have a really interesting dialogue.